Even though construction of the courthouse was completed in 1891, its tower remained silent for 25 years. It was not until 1916 when a donation from a civic-minded citizen put the finishing touches on the courthouse as we know it today. From the Little Falls Daily Transcript, dated April 4, 1942. There are few men, women, or children in the city of Little Falls who have not, at some time, been urged to greater speed by the peeling of the clock in the courthouse tower. Presented to the county through the terms of the will of the late Josiah Page, the mammoth timepiece was hoisted to its perch in 1916. Assisting with the raising of the local Big Ben were many of the courthouse gang, some of whom are still on the job. The Page family will set aside a sum of $2,000 for the purchase of the clock, and though the cost did not consume the entire amount, the balance has been used in maintenance. Testimony as to the perfection of the clockworks is found in the fact that in 26 years, not more than $200 has been spent in upkeep. A memorial tablet reminding courthouse visitors of the clock occupies a prominent place in the main corridor of the county building. Probate Judge A. A. Fuger, one of the crew who assisted in installing the clock, recalls that the bell, which tolls the hour, weighs 1,000 pounds and the smaller bill for the half hour weighs 500 pounds. Requiring surprisingly little care, the clock must be wound once a week. The winding process itself is a difficult process because of the strength of the spring. A few years ago when it was necessary to replace a few of the worn parts, a factory representative said that the purchase of the bells alone would now require greater expenditure than did the entire clock on the date of purchase. Around 1954, lightning struck the tower and a minor fire scorched the rafters in this section. It was quickly put out. The electric motor and electric shaft here, everything, that got put on later on um, after they used the weights. The, before that, the weights is what ran it. Now this electric motor runs all the time and it runs the hands and the clock and the bell and everything. Once an hour, this arm here will drop down and that is what triggers the bells to ring every hour. The mechanism drops this down and then it reset, brings it back up and resets it. That's what runs the bell.
Morrison County was named after two fur trading brothers, William and Allen Morrison. At its foundation, $8,000 was issued from the county in the form of bonds to build a courthouse. Only one room could be used by 1860, and by 1869, the original courthouse was finished. After the new courthouse was completed, the original courthouse building was moved to First Avenue Southeast. It was remodeled and used for private enterprises. The columns were removed and portico was enclosed, giving it more floor space. Nathan Richardson, affectionately known as Uncle Nate, was one of the founders of Morrison County when it was organized in 1856. He was later instrumental in expanding the county to include the portion on the west side of the Mississippi River. He assisted the Mille Lacs Band of Ojibwe with efforts to retain its reservation, helped to develop Little Falls and Dakota Railroad, and was Morrison County's first historian. Richardson has the distinction of holding more public offices than any other person in the history of the county. Those offices included Minnesota State Legislator, Register of Deeds, Clerk of County Board of Commissioners, Judge of Probate, Mayor of Little Falls, Postmaster, County Attorney, County Auditor, Deputy State's Attorney, Captain of Home Guards, Chair of the Little Falls Township Board, Election Clerk, President of the Board of Education, and County Census Taker. <laughs>